Hey guys, it's Chris here, and in the emerging world of DeFi, Terra Luna aims to be the best platform out there to host and use stable coins on. So in this video, we're gonna break down some backstory on this project, how it works, whether or not you should buy it, and if it will really become the best option in crypto to mint new stable coins on. So to start, Terra is a cryptocurrency project that was originally created about three years ago by a Korean software company called Terraform Labs. This company was founded by Daniel Shin and Du Quan, with the main goal being to design a blockchain that would support various different stable coins better than anyone else in crypto so far. To raise money for this ambitious undertaking, Terra's native token called Luna took a slightly different approach than what we've become accustomed to in crypto. Luna was not released to the public as a traditional initial coin offering. Instead, the token was privately sold to a relatively small number of private investors during its genesis. Some of these investors included Binance and some smaller players in the crypto space that you may or may not have heard of. The exact number of Luna tokens that were sold during this period is very debatable. However, it likely lies between 210 million to over 380 million tokens. Now for a little context, Luna's current total circulating supply is about 408.9 million tokens. So at least half of their tokens were sold at their genesis, with each of these tokens being sold at prices that are estimated to be between 16 to 80 cents per coin, which is a dramatic difference to their current price of nearly $24. Whoever got in at the beginning made a lot of money. During the genesis of the Luna token, less than 5% was available for purchase by the average investor, people like me and you. Approximately 10% of the tokens were kept by Terraform Labs, 20% was given to contributors and employees who helped build this system. 25% was allocated to the original backers of this project. 20% was used for the project's stability reserves. And the remaining 20% of the supply was issued to the Terra Alliance, which represents a group of 16 investment banks that operate in 40 countries around the world. The reason these Genesis tokens were divided the way they were was to ensure the Terra project's ability to properly support algorithmically balanced stablecoins. They need to be able to support these during times of high volatility within the crypto market, which is one of their huge draws that they believe will make them the future king of DeFi. So with that backstory out of the way, the Terra project is different from other similar cryptocurrency projects out there because their ultimate goal is to disrupt the traditional banking system through the mass adoption of stable coins and DeFi infrastructure but it's really mostly through stable coins. They're putting a huge emphasis on this in Du Quan, the Terraform Labs' CEO said, quote, the stablecoin is the most important product in crypto, uniquely serving the currency function of cryptocurrencies, and he believes that it is instrumental in the adoption and implementation of a DeFi system. The most common stablecoin on this network is the UST token, which is an algorithmically balanced stablecoin, which represents the price of the US dollar. UST is implemented in the same way that other stablecoin tokens are implemented. However, its value is not backed by the traditional one-to-one -one ratio that stablecoins normally Normally use. Now it's about to get a little confusing, so just stick with me. I think it'll make sense in a second. To mint UST on the Terra blockchain, the creator of the stablecoin needs to burn the equivalent amount of Terra's native token called Luna to be able to do that. So to simplify it a little further, you can trade one Luna token, let's say it's valued at $10, for one stablecoin, let's say it's valued at $1. And by making these trades like this, it rebalances the network and it ensures that the stablecoin's price and the Luna token price don't end up with an incorrect ratio to each other. This ability to trade stable coins and Luna tokens for one another is what stabilizes stable coins on the Terra blockchain. But it also creates a unique opportunity because it gives users the ability to profit from each coin's rebalancing. Let me explain. A user could potentially burn a Terra token against the UST stablecoin on the network or vice versa to make money from the difference in whichever token is inaccurately balanced. If the stablecoin was selling at 90 cents when it's supposed to be selling at $1, then users could potentially profit from this situation by making trades between the Luna token and the stablecoin. This is called arbitrage and many people do this with crypto brokerages because oftentimes prices on Coinbase might not be the same as Binance or somewhere else. So they'll buy coins in high numbers, high amounts, a lot of money on brokerages that sell them for a lesser price. And then they'll go sell these coins on brokerages that sell them for a higher price. They get to keep this profit, but by doing this, going through this process of balancing things out, 
it keeps prices pretty even. You're not gonna to be too high on Coinbase and Binance or whatever. This is called price arbitrage. Terra is using a very similar but not similar process because instead of just buying and selling tokens and coins back and forth, they use a burn mechanism which affects the supply and demand and in turn it affects the price of tokens and coins on the Terra blockchain which are arbitraged against each other until the supply and demand gets back into correct ratios. Also, the validators of the Terra network provide Oracle services in order to confirm that prices of both the Luna token and the US ST stablecoin are being rebalanced accurately. It is important to mention that any discrepancies between the valuation of the Luna token and the UST stablecoin are incredibly uncommon. This is due to the high number of network participants who are consistently arbitraging the value of both cryptocurrencies against one another to keep any discrepancies from happening. One factor that can affect the value of the Luna token can be attributed to the fact that a small percentage of each Luna token that is used for the minting of stablecoins is not burned but instead these Luna tokens go directly to the Terra community treasury and the holders of the Luna token are responsible for determining how these tokens can be spent. Now aside from being a mode of payment the Luna token also acts as a governance token by giving its holders the ability to vote on the implementation of changes to the function of the Terra blockchain. Owning these tokens gives you the ability to vote on how the treasury is spent. This helps build a stronger community by making people feel like they're actually a part of what's happening and and it also acts as another level of protection to prevent unpopular changes from happening. Plenty of ground has already been gained for this project and that's in large part because of the Terra powered app called Chai, which is a payments app used by about 25 million South Koreans. But it doesn't stop there. In Terra's future, people will be able to buy and sell items using digital cash stored in blockchain-based mobile phone wallets, and merchants will accept multi-fiat stablecoins that are automatically swapped behind the scenes into whatever stablecoin that merchant needs it to be in. You'll also be able to earn interest on unused cash by keeping it in Terra DeFi applications. Now, probably more alluring than that for business is that Terra believes it can reduce merchant transaction fees to 0.5% or less, and they can settle transactions in about six seconds, which they believe should bring more partners on board, which in turn would cause more people to use Terra going forward. One important thing to know about Terra is that it is a proof of stake blockchain, but its rewards aren't very good. They average around 1.5% annually, which is far less than similar blockchains like Cardano, but even with those low returns, 30 to 40% of Luna token supply is being staked and it has a 21 day locking period. So it creates a situation that makes Luna's price a lot more likely to pump because when it's running up, a good portion of the supply is locked and will not be able to be sold. So onto the verdict, should you buy Luna? Well, please remember that I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is financial advice. Please consult a financial advisor before you make any decisions. But with that said, I really like Luna. I own some Luna, it's done really well for me, and they have a lot of positives to look to as a serious DeFi project going forward. But with that said, I would be remiss not to address the fact that stable coins are in the hot seat right now. We all know it. Just for example, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has asked the people who are overseeing crypto assets to act quickly to ensure there is appropriate US regulatory framework in place for these kinds of things, mostly stable coins in the crypto market. That's what they're coming after first. They like to compare crypto to the Wild West. So between her, the SEC, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve and everyone else in our government, I would be surprised if they don't come down harder on stable coins first and then follow that with regulatory action on the rest of crypto. That's just my opinion, I could be wrong, but that doesn't mean we should shy away from crypto because of some regulations. It's just something that we have to be aware of that could negatively impact the price of the Luna token going forward, mostly short term. I think long term, it's not going to affect it too badly, but I think in the short term, if they come after stable coins, and this is such a stable coin centric uh, cryptocurrency, I think we could start seeing some negative price action if that was to happen. 
It might not happen. We still have to watch it, watch the news, see what's going on, but it's something to be aware of. So if you guys found this video informative, then I hope you will consider subscribing and hitting the bell for more information Drop multiple times a week on stocks, real estate, crypto, and all things personal finance. Also, if this video did provide you value, then it would greatly help my channel if you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you gave this video a share to someone who you know who might be interested in learning more about cryptocurrency. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way through and I will see you guys soon.